Welcome to St. Patrick's Parish. There's no announcements today. Let us begin our prayer by singing hymn number 110, the first Noel, starting with verse 3. morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. With your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together today on this feast day of the Epiphany of the Lord, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the everlasting power of justice, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the bringer of God's peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your love reaches to the ends of the earth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith 
may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you, the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and they come to you. Your sons come afar and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart will throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. <clears throat> the wealth of the nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midia and Epha. All from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with the justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth shall adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every, every nation, nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, and it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through, a, through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, <clears throat> they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them. Until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem, your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. We just heard that from Isaiah. You know, each of this Sunday's readings celebrates the epiphany of the Lord to the Gentiles. In the gospel account of the visit of the Magi from the East, we discover that the Christ child is not only the savior of the Jews, but also the savior of the world. And St. Paul actually affirms this in the second reading, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body. And the first reading tells us that Jerusalem has sons and daughters that come from afar. In what sense does Jerusalem bear sons and daughters? In the spousal mystery of the scriptures, the mystery of Jerusalem, God's holy city and dwelling place, is fulfilled in Mary, who is both the mother of God and the mother of all the living. Enter the first reading from this perspective, and the mystery opens to us. Rise up in splendor, Mary. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. While darkness covers the rest of the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. The Lord shines on Mary, <clears throat> and over her appears his glory. This woman brings God to earth, her body revealing the glory of the Lord to all the kings and nations of the world. If we, you and I, like the wise men, set out on a journey of discovery. We shall be, we shall be radiant at what we see, and our hearts shall throb and overflow. Mary, show us the glory of your Son. <clears throat> you 
You know, epiphany, the word, comes from the Greek word epiphania, meaning manifestation. It is the manifestation of the newborn Lord to the Magi and to the world. The star which rises in the east guides the world to worship the Lord made flesh for its salvation. You know, there is another shining light in every Catholic church around the world which burns before the tabernacle containing the Holy Eucharist, the body and blood of that same Lord who was adored by the Magi in that manger. Those who follow that light will find the Lord present, body and soul, under the appearance of bread. You know, Pope St. John Paul II recalled how Mary... Mary became the first tabernacle in history when at the visitation to her elder cousin, she, at that time she bore in her womb the word being made flesh so that her cousin Elizabeth and the baby that she bore in her womb might adore him. Thus has the church declared from the first days that Mary is the Theotokos, the God-bearer and mother of God. Perhaps this is why so many monstrances today have come to be fashioned in the image of the Blessed Virgin. Thus, she who once held the Lord in her arms now holds his Eucharist body before the world so that we may adore him. You know, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, the Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. That was in the Gospel of Matthew. The Magi were most likely from Persia, which is today modern-day Iran. These men who regularly engaged in a study of the stars. They were not Jewish, but were most likely very much aware of the popular belief of the Jewish people that a king would be born who would save them. These magi were called to God to encounter the savior of the world. Interestingly, God used something that was extremely familiar to them as an instrument of their calling. He used the stars, something they studied. It was among their belief that when someone of great importance was born, this birth was accompanied by a new star. So when they saw this new, bright, and brilliant star, they were filled with curiosity and hope. One of the most significant aspects of this story is that they responded. They went there. God called them through the use of a star, and they chose to follow that sign, embarking on a long and arduous and probably sometimes dangerous journey. You know, God, he often uses those things most familiar to us that are part of our daily life to send forth his calling. Recall, for example, that many of the apostles were fishermen, and Jesus used their occupation to call them, making them fishers of men. He especially used the miraculous catch of fish to clearly indicate to them that they now had a new calling. So in our own lives, you and I, God is constantly calling us to seek him out and worship him. He will often use some of the most ordinary parts of our lives to send forth that calling. How is he calling you today, this week, this year? In what way is he sending you a star? To follow. You know, many times when God speaks, we ignore his voice. 
We must learn from these magi and diligently respond when he calls. We must not hesitate, and we must seek to daily be attentive to the ways that God invites us to deeper trust, surrender, and worship of him. So reflect today upon God's call in your life. Is it there? Are you listening? Are you responding? Are you ready and willing to abandon all else in life so that so as to serve his holy will? So seek him out, wait on him, and respond. Doing so will be the best decision you could ever make. Lord, I love you and pray that I will be open to your guiding hand in my life. May I always be attentive to the countless ways that you call to me each and every day. And may I always respond to you with all of my heart. Jesus, I trust in you. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Placing our hearts and minds before the Lord, let us offer all of our prayers before him as we celebrate this feast day of the Epiphany. For the church, that we may reflect the light of Christ to all peoples and nations in all languages and cultures, so that everyone may know the love and mercy we have found in our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For refugees, victims of persecution or war, and all who flee places of darkness, that they may find hospitality and opportunity at the completion of their journeys, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all people may be guided by the light of truth as they make their own journeys of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for our parish community, that we may <clears throat> welcome one and all to the home we have known in this fellowship of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our mission parish in Haiti, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for all of our first responders and military and frontline medical people and support staff that they all be kept safe, free from harm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those killed, injured, or affected in any way by the war in the Ukraine, that a peaceful end to this conflict may happen soon, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear God. our prayer. For all of those friends and loved ones who have gone on before us into the embrace of our Lord's arms, whom we will remember in this liturgy, and especially for our parish family, and especially for Vivian Guzman, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father in heaven, transform our hearts after your most sacred heart, especially in this day of the Feast of the Epiphany, where we celebrate that the gift of your salvation came not only to those it was promised to, but to the entire world. May we be responsive to your great gift of love towards us, and may we open our hearts more fully to your holy will at work in our lives. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our gifts are brought to the altar, let us join together in singing hymn number 105, We Three, Three Kings.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these your gifts of your church, and which are now, or which are offered now, not gold or frankincense or myrrh, by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper has, was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now for the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, following Mass, uh, if you'd like, in the baptismal font, last evening we actually consecrated what's called uh, Epiphany Water. And once a year we get to bless with a very special prayer the, uh, a, this gift of holy water. It's, uh, as, they, as I kept joking with everybody last night, this is the good stuff. So, if you would like to grab some afterwards, we do have, we'll have some bottles already filled on the baptismal font. It'll be moved into the middle of the, uh, middle of the sanctuary here, right at the front. And then from there, you can actually grab one of those bottles. Or there'll be other ones that are empty that you can fill up and take with you as we, again, start this brand, uh, brand new full year here uh, of 2023. It's a wonderful gift to be able to take with you. There's a couple more announcements. Uh, again, uh, the Knights of Columbus, as was announced last week, they're going to be hosting a cornhole tournament next Saturday evening. Uh, the entry fee is $50, and there are limited spots. So if you want to sign up, you need to sign up as soon as possible at the doors of the church on your way out because those spots will fill up very, very rapidly. Uh, also, uh, in, a, in a couple of months' time when we get into Lent, from March 24th until March 27th, we'll have a Light of the World retreat. I know many have been looking for an opportunity to go, so this is an opportunity during our Lenten season to be able to take that up. There are more details in the bulletin on both of those events. And then finally, as always, Lexio Divina is available at the doors of the church. I get all of them, I think. I think so. There we go. Deacon Brian says I got them all. So, with that in mind, together we pray. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast in hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May, oh, there we go. Da -da. Bow your heads. Pray for God's mercy. At some point I won't run over Deacon Brian trying to do that. May God, who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, May God make you, too, a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. And so, when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in peace. Glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks and speak to God. Have a great week, everyone. <clears throat> As we go forth together, let us sing hymn number 82, Joy to the World. <laughs> 